uh, we've got the features and functions that we need on packet optical systems to essentially replace TDM networks. So this was a market driver that made it possible for packet optical systems to come in and start reducing the cost of your backhaul network. And examples are 8032 for protection. Another interesting trend that we're seeing in the industry that uh, packet optical uh, systems, I think, are going to have to step up to is the fact that fiber is pushing closer to the consumer. And of course, what's driving that is the increase in bandwidth for various applications like wireless backhaul um, and, of course, um, uh, business services and, and that type of thing. Now, that hasn't necessarily pushed packet optical systems closer to the customer. In fact, there are a lot of what I call interim solutions, like PON solutions, that allow you to deliver packet optical, I'm sorry, that allow you to deliver um, Ethernet services over fiber to kind of satisfy the requirement in the meantime. But the issue with those systems is that they're limited in capacity. PON systems uh, have a certain amount of capacity, whether it be 1 gig or 10 gig, and they share that amongst multiple users. And we need a solution that I think packet optical systems can step up to to solve that problem. And we'll talk about that in a minute. And finally, the last thing that helps us uh, simplify your network and uh, bring services to you at a lower cost is basically standardization of uh, carrier Ethernet, both 1.0 and 2.0. And the reason for that is simple. I mean, if we have a defined number of services and a defined number of attributes that can be defined or that can be associated with those services, that makes it easier for us to build OSS systems, right? We can do things like auto provisioning. It's easier to do like point and click provisioning and things like that. So I talked about um, the uh, need to push fiber all the way to the customer prem and the fact that uh, the capacity of services is actually uh, increasing. Um, so right now, if you look at uh, services like uh, wireless backhaul, for instance, you look at business services, generally what you're trying to provide is a gig or below, right? Now the problem with pushing a packet optical system into that application is twofold. Number one, standard optics on packet optical systems are relatively expensive, right, to, especially tunable optics. And that relates to issue number two, which is you really don't want to have to track wavelengths that close to the customer. It makes it operationally very, very complex. There are, standard, or there are um, technologies out there in the industry now, and one in particular that we like is a technology called WDM Pawn. And what WDM Pawn does is it allows you, it works like a pawn system in that it's passive out in the field, but instead of taking a single pipe and splitting it amongst multiple users, it actually delivers a wavelength to each individual user. Now, a lot of you will think, well, I can do that with a CWM system. But even CWM doesn't prove in well when it comes to the optics for applications that are that close to the customer. You want the lowest possible cost. So what we've done in the WM Pawn world is we've come up with optical technologies that are much cheaper, fully tunable, and they automatically tune. And finally, where would we be without talking about SDN in an SDN conference? So basically, in every conference you've probably gone to, with any speaker that talks about layer 0, layer 1, layer 2, et cetera, draws a layered picture, something like that, right? And the reason for that is that's how products evolved, right? We treated the optical layer as its own thing. We treated layer 2 as its own thing. Um, and basically, in packet optical systems, we start to bring that together. But SDN has taken it one step further. In packet optical systems, initially what we did was we still treated each layer differently. We created control planes for optical, control planes for layer two, and then we fought about how they were going to communicate with each other. So it made things very complex. And what SDN did was it took the control plane and it put it up in a centralized place. And it said, forget those layers, forget what's under there. Basically, just tell this thing, this centralized controller, SDN controller what you want to do and it'll take care of the details underneath, right? So from a control plane standpoint and an operational standpoint, that simplifies things tremendously. Provisioning for you now isn't provisioning at layer one and then layer two. It's only provisioning a service. And to make things even simpler, the way packet optical systems have evolved, originally when they were created, you would have layer one devices and you would have layer two cards that would go in a chassis. Now we've integrated all of that. So most systems, the way they work, you have one card that does long reach, short reach. You, it's a switch. You can take any port, plug it into a router switch, or a long haul WDM system. It doesn't matter. It's all one, a part of one system. So you get capital savings and simple operations overall. So in conclusion, I, it's continued innovation, both at layer one and layer two, that's making packet optical systems 
uh, more cost effective and allowing you to deliver new service types. Centralized control plane with SDN is certainly helping us uh, be more efficient from an operational standpoint and from a resource utilization standpoint. And finally, standard packet and optical through CE 2.0 allows us as uh, system providers to create much more operational friendly OSS systems for you.